Hello friends, I am Dr. Pratik. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting case scenario from dermatology. So, a 45 year old patient, a female, presents to skin OPD with such skin lesions. Now, when you look her closely, you see that she has got some fluid filled blisters. Now, you wonder and you start to think is it bacterial infection, Bullis sympatigo, or is it something else? Then you look at her back and there you see again multiple lesions, flaccid fluid filled blisters. Some blisters have ruptured to form erosions also. We perform a test known as Nikolsky sign on this patient where we apply tangential pressure on normal skin and we see that there is separation of layers of epidermis. So Nikolsky sign is positive in this patient. Also the patient tells you that doctor I am having pain in my mouth when I eat food and you examine her oral cavity and you see there are multiple oral ulcers in her buccal mucosa, labial mucosa which are painful. So what is your diagnosis? She has got flaccid fluid filled blisters, she has got erosions, Nikolsky sign is positive and oral ulcers. So the patient was asked to do two things. One is get a skin biopsy, number two get direct immunofluorescence test on skin tissue sample and the provisional diagnosis mentioned on the form was Pemphigus vulgaris, right. So friends, this is a classical case of Pemphigus vulgaris, which is a autoimmune blistering disorder. So what is exactly happening in this patient's skin? Let us see. So our human epidermis is made like a wall, where we have got keratinocytes, which are like bricks, which are attached to each other with the help of cement like substance. So what is the cement in our epidermis? It is desmosome, yes, which is attaching the keratinocytes with each other, holding them together. Now the most important desmosome is desmoglin. Now two important types of desmoglin you should know is desmoglin 1 which is expressed in upper layers of epidermis whereas desmoglin 3 is expressed in lower layers of epidermis. Now if there is any problem in the cement, what will happen? The wall will develop cracks right similarly if there is any problem with desmosomes then what will happen the epidermis will develop cracks or gaps we also call it as cleft intra epidermal cleft this will lead to creation of gap in which the fluid will accumulate and this will cause flaccid bulla right so what will happen in pemphigus vulgaris the antibodies are produced against desmoglin 3 yes so if you see inside the patient's blood, the patient's B cells are producing antibody, IgG antibody, which are attacking the desmoglin 3, which is holding up the keratinocytes. Once this desmoglin 3 is destroyed, the keratinocytes will separate. And once they separate, they will change their shape from polygonal to round. So round keratinocytes with larger nucleus. These are your acantholytic cells, which are seen in pemphigus. So how can we see this acantholytic cells? There is a simple bedside test known as Zang smear. So what do we do in Zang smear? We take the sample from the floor of the blister of pemphigus patient. We put it on a glass slide, put GM sustain on it and look under the microscope. And we see such beautiful cells in the microscope. So these are your keratinocytes, multiple round keratinocytes, which are oval also in shape, round to oval. And these are having hypertrophic nucleus, larger nucleus as compared to normal. These are your classical acantholytic cells of pemphigus vulgaris, right? Also, now can you tell me what will be the biopsy finding in this patient? It's a case of pemphigus vulgaris where the antibodies are produced against desmoglin 3. Desmoglin 3 is expressed in lower layers of epidermis. So, we will get a gap, a crack in the epidermis in the lower layers. So, intraepidermal cleft, intraepidermal cleft, along with that, we will see a suprabasal region that is affected. So, suprabasal intraepidermal cleft. Now, when we examine this biopsy closely, we will see that the floor of the blister is formed by keratinocytes, basal keratinocytes, which are lying singly attached to the dermoepidermal junction and these keratinocytes give appearance of row of tombstone. 
also row of tombstone appearance classically seen in histology of pemphigus vulgaris right now another important investigation is direct immunofluorescence so what do we do in direct immunofluorescence we stain the tissue the skin tissue with fluorescent labeled antibodies which are targeting the igg and c3 which are already deposited along the margin of keratinocytes so this fluorescent label antibodies will highlight the periphery of the keratinocytes that is the desmoglein which is having igg and c3 attached to it already so we see a beautiful pattern on direct immunofluorescence that is fish net immunofluorescence isn't it beautiful this is nothing but intercellular deposits of igg and c3 right so fish net pattern seen in pemphigus vulgaris now to summarize all the classical features of pemphigus vulgaris i have got a wonderful mnemonic for you that is donald duck fishing so d for desmoglein 3 antibody o for oral ulcer n for nikolsky sign positive a for acantholytic cells l for lower age group that is 40 to 60 years in pemphigus vulgaris the age group is 40 to 60 years as compared to bullous pemphigoid which is another autoimmune distant disorder the age group there is 60 to 80 years higher here we have got a lower age group another d is death stone appearance that is row of tombstone appearance fishing is fish net pattern of immunofluorescence so ronald duck fishing is mnemonic for pemphigus vulgaris so this was our case summary a interesting case scenario i hope you enjoyed it right so let us conclude here and see you in next class